Have you ever wondered how to create these delicate chocolate feathers? Well, good, because I'll show you step by step all the detailed tips not so many pastry chefs will tell you. So, if you want to master creating them at home from your own kitchen, keep watching. So, first, we need to melt chocolate to start tempering chocolate. I'm going to do that by placing it on top of hot water. Make sure your water is not boiling hot though. I already removed from the stove because the chocolate can get burnt. Also make sure that water or any liquids are not going into the bowl because it's going to completely mess up the tempering. They can be pretty sensitive sometimes. To create a beautiful, delicate feathers, you need to temper chocolate. Tempering is necessary to create solid, shiny chocolate decorations or show pieces. And to temper chocolate, you need a special chocolate called Kuberture chocolate. Kuberture chocolate. Kuberture. Thanks, Google. I'm not gonna pronounce it, but that chocolate. And which allows you to temper chocolate. Yes, you cannot temper chocolate with chocolate chips or chocolate melt, for example, unfortunately, but it's totally worth it. Absolutely pure, high quality chocolate that tastes so good. There are so many brands for Kubichu chocolate and I have not tried many of them yet, but I'll leave the links of some of my favorites so far on the description below, including the type I actually used today. So check them out later. So. Tempering chocolate, how can you do it? It requires three easy steps. Easy steps, if I sums up. Step one, let it melt up to a certain temperature, which we are doing right now, as you can see. Step two, cool it down to a certain temperature. And step three, heat up again up to a certain temperature. And I said certain temperatures because it really depends on the ratio of cacao inside. But let me explain. As we know, chocolate can be categorized with dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and white chocolate usually. And as step one, melt the chocolate with these temperatures. And as step two, cool down the chocolate with these temperatures. And as step three, heat up again with these temperatures. You can see that temperatures vary for each. And also, as I wrote, the range of each temperature can vary slightly. So for example, even if you categorize it as dark chocolate, there are so many different types with different cacao percentages. So uh, for example, some are like 55%, some are 70% or 80%, or for milk chocolate, some are like 35%, 40% or 45% and so on. And typically as the percentage of cacao goes up, that means each temperature of step one to step three goes up also. I hope that makes sense. And here as a step two, I'm cooling down the temperature and there are many ways to do that. Like I did this time, you can cool it down in a room temperature very slowly over mixing, which takes some time. So I usually do something else at the same time. And once the temperature gets close to step three, I start mixing constantly. Or you can use cold ice water, marvel stone, or tempering machine even. And here, I'm warming up the chocolate again as step three. You can do so by using hot simmering water or torch. By the way, as I told you earlier, there are so many percentages of cacao even for just dark chocolate and the temperatures of tempering slightly differ depending on that. But most of the Kubichu blends should kindly list the specific temperatures on their packages. For example, I used Calibe 66% from Verona today and on the package it says exactly how I should control the temperatures for the tempering step 1 to step 3. So definitely look for that one. Alright, so now your chocolate tempering is done and let's make chocolate feathers. So first I'm using thick acetate film, but this film makes this process easier and helps creating beautiful curled feathers. I'll leave the link of that and all the other tools I used today on the description below. Using a small knife like this, dip the tip into the chocolate, remove the excess chocolate and clean off one side like this using the edge of your ball. Now watch closely, touch the surface of the film and gently push the surface. And before you pull out, here is the important tips. So lightly lift up the knife and slightly push up like this. Slightly is the key. This is to make sure that it'll have a sharp tip and also to create the core line to create beautiful, more natural looking feathers. After that, pull out straight, making sure it is still touching the chocolate. 
This will complete the quote line and also create the thin line on the edge, which makes it look more real. So again, step one, gently push down to the film. Step two, slightly lift up the knife and slightly push up. Step three, pull out straight. So many people skip step two and only do step one and step three and wonder why it doesn't look so good. But now you know why. Don't skip the step two. But that's the secret key. And I think you will have even better idea of what I'm talking about if you actually hold the knife and feel the chocolate with it. Place the film in the mold. Uh, some people call it a tallin mold or log mold or anything similar to the shape like this. And you can stack them once the one on the bottom starts getting hardened and not sticky anymore. I recommend to have a couple of those pans or molds so that you don't need to wait for your chocolate to get dried. But if the tempering was done correctly, you see it starts getting harder in short time. And also make sure your loom is not warm or freezing cold while you are doing this since it can mess up the tempering or make the process simply a lot harder. And using your fingers, make sure your film is not going to move while you are working on it like this. Or you can spray alcohol on the working surface and attach the film so that it's not gonna move around. And as you go, the chocolate is going to cool down, but to prevent it from starting to get hardened, heat up your bowl again, either by your torch or hot simmering water. Make sure that the temperature is even and maintain the temperatures up between step two and step three. Once you are done, chill in the fridge and let it completely set. If the tempering was done successfully, your feathers are going to come off so easily from the films like this. And finally, let's add finishing touches to make it look extra special. Prepare your hot water with a towel, dip your knife in and warm it up, dry it out and cut diagonally like this. Do it quickly each time so that the chocolate is not going to melt too much with the hot knife. Instead of cutting with the same intervals from the top to the bottom, I like to cut very randomly. I cut some parts deeper, some parts really tiny bit, and add a little bit more realistic look. This is the part I enjoy the most for creating chocolate feathers because it can dramatically upgrade the looks and you feel so content when you see it as you do it. Some people cut more or less, so I recommend you to be creative with them and do freely as you want. Also, take out one or two films at a time from the fridge so that the feathers are not going to warm up while you are working on them. You want to keep them cool so that they are not going to start melting while you are holding it. Finally, I mix the gold dust with straight alcohol, this time with vodka, and brushed on the soft face using a brush like this, and it is complete. Alright, I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, give me a thumbs up if it was and comment below and definitely ask me your questions about the tutorial if you have any. In addition, I recommend to search online to see how other chocolate feathers look to get more inspirations because each chefs have their own styles. Even on YouTube, there are so many tutorials of chocolate feathers, so I recommend to learn the varieties before you actually try it on your own kitchen. So using the extra chocolate, I make some easy chocolate decorations. First, apply alcohol on a tray so that the acetate film is going to be attached. Use a dough scraper to make sure there's no air bubbles and spread your chocolate very thinly because it looks so much more delicate. Once it's dried on top but not wholly hardened yet, cut your chocolate. This time I did tiny squares and I actually used them for this video I created before as a fruit tart decoration. I cut the other half with rectangle shapes. Place a silicone mat on top so that chocolate is not going to be winded in the fridge and chill completely. Once it's chilled, flip the tray and take off the film. And I used the rectangle ones for this tutorial about the mini gingerbread houses and hot cocoa. Definitely check out those videos as well if you haven't yet. And uh, I would definitely want to try hot cocoa with chocolate feathers. That would be so gorgeous to look. So 
Thank you so much for watching this video all the way up to the end. I really appreciate it. And uh, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.